Hello, uh, my name is uh, Brant, and what I'm going to talk to you today is the explanation of the word no. And that doesn't mean K-N-O-W, although you do need to know and to be able to say no to what's taking place all around you today. If you do not say no to the vaccines, you are, and you don't say anything, you are giving your consent for them to do that to you. And so you must, spell, you must spell that out very clear to them. That is our government, or not my government, but other, you know, such and such. But anyway, we won't go there. Um, simply is that you need to say no. Because if you don't say anything and go along with it, they're going to do it. That's their plan. So you need to know that you need to say no. And that doesn't mean voting. That means simply by your language and what you're saying either on Facebook or whatever ways you express yourself, you need to say no. The sad part is that people don't understand that. And what do I mean by that? Um, most people think that simply is they go marching either to uh, Washington or to the state capital here in South Carolina, being Columbia, that that's how you say no. No, that's not the way you say no, folks. That's just not the way. What you're doing is when you go to Washington or in, to march or parade or whatever, to Columbia, the same thing, South Carolina, you are actually going to them as slaves, beggars, please do this for me. So you're no longer on equal ground. You are seen as inferior to the government in that perspective. Do you follow what I'm saying? When you go, it also makes you feel positive as though you're doing something by marching. Somewhat of a euphoria. You know, oh yeah, we are here together, we're working together, such and such, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna stand against these things, we're gonna stand against these tyrants. No, you're not. You're not gonna do that. That doesn't work. The best way to understand it simply is this. Like I said, no. You no longer see them as your government. You no longer see them as above you because they are not above you. You no longer see yourself as inferior to them because you're not inferior. When you march in the crowds, you're actually, you're marching as a slave or as a citizen equals simply a subject. That's how they see you. You're there basically as a taxpayer paying taxes to, you know, I'm complaining that you need to vote this way so I can take this from so-and-so, whatever. And that's what government does. You do know that, don't you? You do know that that part of that whole deal with you marching and doing these things and begging is that they will sometimes say, oh, that's fine. So the Republicans will take from their Democrat constituents and the Democrats will take from their Republicans constituents. It's, it's just that way. It's so clear. This is how you're divided. We're all one, but they divide you. And usually it's always in two. Always. It's a brilliant scheme. It's how, um, you know, it, 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 it blows, you know, but I was involved in it. Don't get me wrong. I was involved in it in many ways. Uh, I was involved in it as a college Republican president at USC Aiken. I was involved in it with the uh, Republican Party, helping others to be elected. Soon after, after getting out of college, helping local candidates in small ways. Um, I got involved. I guess I, I helped them out. Anyway, later on, I thought I discovered the truth, just like my father that uh, the two-party system doesn't work, so let's vote on the third party. So um, 2004, I became the county 
leader of the um, uh, Constitution Party, which is a third party here in, in South Carolina. And we had uh, a candidate that run, a couple of candidates to run for office. We didn't win, but um, that wasn't the point. But it's how, and then I got involved a little bit with the Libertarian Party. Uh, but then I realized simply is, um, no, no, I'm wrong here. I don't need to get involved in politics. I need to pull away. I need to be disengaged with the system. Get out of the system. This is why people don't speak up. Many uh, are not speaking up because they work for the government. Uh, teachers, uh, people who work uh, in plants that are, uh, not plants, but um, post office, you do know that they cannot give their views politically, those that work for the U.S. Postal Service, and anybody else that works for the government. They cannot. So they forfeit their right in some ways because they work for the government. So they can't speak out against that, which is a shame. But that's why government jobs are paid far more than the private sector. That's a big thing that's changed in the last 25, 30 years here, folks. Big change. Most people didn't work for the government when I was in school or college or whatever. They didn't want to work for the government. They went to work for manufacturing or went into college or whatever, went into higher degrees, or they simply said, um, I'll start my own business type of thing. That's all gone. And what we're seeing is the last part of it right now taking place over this foolishness of a quote-unquote virus that is nothing but a joke. And it's going to be used to push their draconian government policies upon us until we say no. And we need to say, hell no. And so, um, this is how you do it. I don't give you consent. You're not in natural law. You're not even a, le you're not a legitimate government. You're not. They're not a legitimate government. You realize simply the emperor wears no clothes. You know why? They are nothing but actors. They have no power. Their power is used by threats to seize something from you or to throw you in jail. But in reality, that is nothing but a dictatorship, isn't it? Isn't it? You're not free. You think you're free because you've been told you're free. Well, why do they tell you that? Because in reality, simply is they have to use that as a form of propaganda to tell you you're in a free country. If I'm in a free country, why do I have to pay taxes all the time? Why do I have to have license all the time? I'm not free. I do no harm. But this is all built upon a system. A system that says, goes way back, probably could go back to the age of the days of Constantine, when they quote unquote worked as he was a political leader and he created a created a religion, created a Christianity as it is today. We talked about this in seminary. In some ways, because you can see it very clearly back then, but it's the same thing today. The church and the state are in bed together. As simple as it is. They work together as a tandem. What do I mean by that? Well, first, the church has to have the power, and it got the power from supposedly the emperor, Constantine. To say that as he used these pagan relig religious deals and mixed it with Christianity or brought it in and mixed it. That's why Christians worship, worship on Sunday. Why would they worship on Sunday? That was a holy day for the Romans in their pagan days. Sunday. 
They worship the sun on Sunday. So it began. And gradually the church got into there with the, with the government and the power to tell people later on, oh, we rule over you because guess what? You're a sinner. You're evil. You do, not, you do wrong things. You are not capable of doing anything right. Do you see this, how this happens? They, they use this in a way to take away your power. This was over approximately 17, 1800 years ago, supposedly. And, and there, you know, you know, we don't even know if that's even true, if it took place. I mean, we know it took place, but we don't know if that was such and such because they ate, maybe they changed the dates. But the point is simply is, is that they used that so you wasn't able to do anything right. So you need the government to control you instead of you being able to self-govern yourself to do no harm unless someone threatens you and then you protect yourself. I don't see people who do wrong things. I see people who do wrong things because the system has made it so hard to live a good life. Look around you. At one time, my great-great-grandfathers raised their own crops, had their own cows or pigs, chickens, whatever. They were far freer than we are today, far freer. Yes, they worked hard. I'm not, they worked hard and they didn't have a whole lot, but they were free, far more free than we are today. They didn't have income tax. They didn't have hunting license, fishing license, driver's license. You were who you were. You didn't have social security taxes. And you surely didn't have a Federal Reserve that creates money out of nothing. The Federal Reserve is nothing but a group of private bankers who benefit and create money out of nothing. Nothing. And they charge the government interest on the money they lend and also the paper, the cost of printing it. It's all deceitful. When you loan some money to somebody or give somebody somebody, do you say, oh, well, you need to pay me back and pay me interest? No, you don't do that. But banks do that because they create money out of what you give them. You also, quote unquote, the government does the same thing. So this is why people suffer. The other thing is simply is this. People are poor and they're not able to see the big picture in what's going on and how the government controls you. So if you're getting Social Security or you're going to get something from the government or this universal income crap, all that means simply is you're being quote unquote fooled. You won't speak out against the government because guess who's feeding you? You stupid fool you. Do you not see that? It's how they buy you all. It's how they buy you all. And so you won't speak out because you're getting something from the government, such and such. You're intimidated. You're scared to do anything. Well, why are you? Because you're, you know you're threatened. If you lived in a free country, why would you have the feeling of such and such being threatened by the government? Why would you? Why do you sense that? Because it's been taught to you. And you can feel it. You can sense it. Because people are fearful. And most of the time, 9 out of 10 times, 99 out of 100 people will not go along with it. But it's gotten so bad now that they've destroyed everything. This whole phony deal with this virus stuff is leading us down to, it's destroying the, the whole economy. 
the whole idea is to something you know destroy the dollar. Anyway, I got to cut all off. Kind of what wound up here, but the point simply is is this: you need to say no. If you don't say no, they'll come to your door and they will force you. Until you say no and have enough gumption to say no, this is my body. I'm taking care of my own body. Okay, I'm taking care of it. And you, you don't know how far you've gotten down slavery when you will not speak out anymore. You live in fear. And when you live in fear, tyrants rule. But let me explain something else. It's vitally important. Anything that's written on paper today by lawyers is third person. What do I mean by that? You weren't there. It wasn't one to one person. You didn't hear it. You weren't in agreement with it. It's void. It has no power over you. Unless you want it to have power over you. And your beliefs keep you in bondage. That's, that's what's going on here. Very clear. It's no, it's no joke here. Your beliefs keep you in bondage. And we live in that system. But we're not going to be in this system too much longer. That's why you hear people, Oh, I believe that Jesus saved my soul. Uh, belief is not... Belief is, just, is not rational. You're taking it again from a third. You're taking it from a way what I was saying. You're taking it from what a preacher tells you, and you assume he's telling you the truth. How do you know there's a heaven and hell? How do you know? Is the church itself preaching also, you better believe it is. It keeps people in fear too and keeps them in bondage also. So you have to understand that the church and the government itself are both tools that are used to keep you in bondage. Unless you don't, if you don't see this, you just don't see it. Or you refuse to see it. You see. Unless you're willing to be open-minded to see these things or investigate, and you can do that. You've had that, you've had that privilege since the internet. You have that privilege. You, in my day, I had to go and check out a library, books, and then I had to read those books to form a hypothesis on a paper to prove such and such was true or not, to give the validity. So it was true or not. And to type that paper too. <laughs> um, for a person that doesn't know how to type, that was a something I never really envy. Um, but anyway, it's much easier now to search things on the internet than you have. And if you want to search for truth, you can find it. But that door is closing too. So, I, want, I talked about a lot of different things here, but they all connect. They all connect. It's, it's, it's like a mesh, and it, it, it becomes stronger. And that's how the church and the government have seized you. They've, they've taken you, and they've told you what you are, and you believed them. Well, I can tell you this, folks. I know that the church is lying, and I know the government is lying. Okay, when I know that, K-N-O-W, that means I say no, N-O, to what they're doing. You follow me? It's very clear. Okay, well, I wish you a great day, and I wish that you would look into truth, because it's the only Savior you have. Not some Jesus guy, not no government, 
truth itself will ring your bell up here and say, now I've got it, I understand. And you just like a jigsaw puzzle. And you begin to put the pieces together and you see things and you say, yes, that's what they've been doing to us. Yes. It's a beautiful thing. Anyway, have a great day.